Hello. So here we are with the creator of the Savage Cat. Hi, I'm Eric Larson. <laughs> welcome to the studio. I'd like to welcome you to the studio. Things are swell here and we're getting a lot of work done. I'm sure you'll enjoy it a lot. I created Savage Dragon when I was in fourth or fifth grade, sort of a combination of Batman and Speed Racer and Captain Marvel. And it was just me trying to do my own superhero. And he was a guy who said a magic word and changed from a guy with long blonde hair, which is what I was at the time, a little kid with long blonde hair. And he became this great big superhero guy and flew around and fought crime and all that other stuff. As um, time went on, every step of the way I would uh, reinvent him, change him, switch things around. I came up with this guy named William Johnson. And William Johnson would uh, change into the dragon in times of stress and he would become bigger and bulkier and, and his uh, costume, which was somewhat like this, would become this ratty, horrible thing. And then he would run around and fight crime. After a while I jumped that. I separated William and Dragon and made Dragon into his own guy. Then at that point it was no longer a costume that he pulled on, but his actual skin was green and he had a pin on his head and, and he went and he fought crime. Eventually uh, the dragon was heading up this huge group called the Society of Superheroes. When I was 19 years old, me and a group of my buddies uh, published our own fanzine uh, called Graphic Fantasy. And that was when the, the first time that the Savage Dragon, or the Dragon at the time, was ever in print. And in that, he, he just quit the Society of Superheroes and uh, his, his wife had, had died and he had this little kid and he was looking after her and, uh, and and it sort of just told the story of him fighting his arch nemesis, the Bronze Man. And from that, I got a job working for a comic book company called Megaton. One of the things I did early on was I brought in the dragon. And this time, now that he's in real life comic books, I reinvented him again, this time bringing his dead wife back to life and all this other stuff. I went on from there to get better paying jobs. I went over and worked for uh, Amera Comics and I worked at Eclipse and then I went from Eclipse to DC and to Marvel. Ten years passes. A group of us all at Marvel Comics all at the same time. We're all going to form our own company, Image Comics. And so what do I dredge up? The Dragon. This time I had to get it right the first time. And what I did was I decided to make him a cop. And I thought well, this would be a smaller starting place and then eventually I could have other superheroes join with the police and eventually they would outgrow uh, being part of the police force and they could become the Society of Superheroes and I'd be back where I was 15 years ago. Now that he is a cop, I'm happy with that, I'm comfortable with that and I'm kind of striking off in my own direction and this ends up being an entirely new character whether I uh, eventually introduce the woman who, who was his wife or give, give him a kid or, or whatever. I'm not even sure at this point. I've got some long range plans. I, I have a fair idea of where I'm going. But usually it's in the neighborhood of five or six issues in the future, not five or six years. Um, but we'll see. This is Vanguard. It's a character that I've created along with Gary Carlson 10, 12, 13 years ago um, for his comic book anthology called Megaton, which he published. Um, Gary came up with the name, the basic concept. I took that and I ran with it. I, I came up with the design. I came up with all the alien races that were one with each other and, and his robot sidekick, Wally. And um, all that fun stuff. The idea with Vanguard when we first came up with him was to do a take on Superman. He was a, he was a uh, strange visitor from another planet with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. And he has been sent out to the farthest outreaches of the, of the galaxy, Earth, out close to Earth. And uh, there's no fighting going on here. The, the fight's way the heck over there. And he's stationed out here, up in a spaceship orbiting the, the planet, bored out of his skull. And uh, Gary's pretty much been running with that one. And uh, I'm just there as a sounding board and making sure that everything looks and reads wonderfully. Super Patriot is kind of interesting. But basically he is a guy who's been fighting crime since World War II and unlike Captain America he was never frozen. So he's been doing this for years. He's getting to be an old guy now. Uh, at 
at some point in the history of the comic, um, his his body was torn apart and he got his arms and legs uh, completely chewed off and his face was all messed up and um, he had to be rebuilt. And so he was rebuilt in cybernetic stuff and now his, now his arms and legs can uh, transform into guns and his eyes can see far and all that other fun stuff. So the basic bionic man riff. Rick Force. When I started the dragon, I wanted to get eventually to this uh, society of superheroes thing. Once I got into it, I decided rather than go that old route that I've been over and I've done before, I would um, create a new team with a new beginning and take them off in an entirely different direction. So I introduced this freak force. I introduced the characters methodically, issue by issue. In, the, in issue two, Dart shows up for the first time. Uh, in, the, in the original miniseries, Super Patriot was there. In issue three, um, Mighty Man shows up. We see him for the first time. And, and it, it just goes on character by character. We built a team. Uh, Rapture was in one issue. and. Uh, uh, Ricochet and Barbera were in the first issue, and, and eventually they were all part of the Chicago police force. And then the, the restrictions that the Dragon could get by with, um, they were unable to deal with. There was just too many things that they couldn't do. They couldn't operate within the, that that realm. So um, they split off. They are a group which. Um, or bounty hunters, basically. They, they, that's how they, they get by. That's how they earn their living. <laughs> and then the phone rings. Uh, I change into the dragon in times of stress. It's a sickness.